What did you like in working in a startup? Whatever solution that you choose, everyone in the company is going to have to deal with this for the rest of their lives. Oh, it's fine, we'll just like do whatever crazy stuff and then later you're like, oh my god, we made a huge mess and we're like, we were never going to fix this. Can you compare like uh, culture difference between uh, people in, in Israel and uh, in the United States? Uh, you know, if you present them some idea, they're like, oh, this is really cool. But, but yeah. yes, I know yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
А, а можешь рассказать, как а, а, проходит поступление в университет в Америке? Yeah, so for undergrad, uh, it's usually uh, so first of all, all the all the applications are, are very formal and like on a schedule. So it's like one application per year. Uh, almost all schools have uh, the deadlines at the same time or like within a week or something. For undergrad, uh, you you submit an application, uh, which is just kind of like your transcript, your personal information, and then an essay uh, or a few essays. Uh, and uh, the essays are more kind of personal. Uh, they're more kind of to show your personality or or something like that. For PhD, it's very similar, but then uh, your essay is called a statement of purpose, and you really want to be writing about research. Uh, okay. So a, as an undergrad, you don't really need to know kind of anything about uh, like research or, or like what you want to study. Uh, for grad school, you really want to say, you know, this is the field I'm interested in. Here's the work I've done previously. Here's the work I plan to do. Here's kind of like why I think this school is the best place to do it. And, uh, and that's pretty yeah, important. I know. I heard that uh, essay is very important for, um, for entering to the university, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, let's talk about um, studying at the university. Um, what was your favorite major? Uh, what was your major? M my major was computer yeah. science. Okay, yeah. 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 And what was your um, favorite class? My favorite class in undergrad was, uh, uh, was systems or mm -hmm. um, operating systems. It, it was considered to be like the hardest class uh, in the oh, school really? at the time. So I really, I'm very competitive. So I looked at it as like a challenge. Uh, and so I, I really invested very heavily into it. And I learned a lot. Uh, it was very, it was very rewarding. And uh, yeah, that, that kind of was like, I think a big like foundation block in my background in, in computer science. Yeah, okay. And um, it was uh, the favorite one, but what about something else? I mean, in other classes, in your program? It, like technical classes? Yeah, or? yeah. Yeah, I just want to compare it with the uh, Russian uh, program, I mean, studying program. Not me, but because I don't really know, but I think my subscribers can to do that. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, so for undergrad, uh, it, we had, um, so we had two schools. There's an engineering school and a liberal arts school. I was in the engineering school. So for engineering students, you had to take uh, many more math classes. So I think I had to take uh, between five and ten math classes, including like linear algebra, continuous uh, continuous math, um, discrete math, uh, and uh, kind of a, a statistics, a few a few other classes like that. And then the standard courses, at least for Columbia, for computer science, kind of started with like object-oriented programming and data structures, which was mostly done in Java. And then um, we had some kind of like medium level classes of like fundamentals of computer systems, which is like how do you build the computer, like what are the parts, what's the CPU, what's what's a disk and things like that. And then uh, then I had to take like 10 uh, uh, like um, upper level classes, which were in like specific fields of either like advanced data structures, um, natural language processing, operating systems, compilers, um, uh, artificial intelligence, so mm, took wow. all those. Interesting. What about practice? Uh, did you have some practice uh, when you study at the university? Uh, what do you mean by practice? Like in terms of just uh, writing code? Maybe or? some projects when you, I don't know, coding or doing things like this. <laughs> yeah, so we definitely had, uh, uh, we had homework. I mean, this was like the main practice that I had okay. uh, in school was, was, was homework. Um, again, like because I'm not really like uh, a huge computer uh, like fanatic. I didn't really do projects on my own. I knew a lot of kids who were like, oh, I'm really interested in this thing. I want to build my own website. I want to build my own program. Never, like <laughs> I, I only did it for homework or for work. I, I don't really play with computers in my free time. So, so that, that was my, my main practice. I would say internships, I was, oh, yeah. I was like working uh, and, and doing like software engineering for, for the internship. Uh, okay, let's talk about internship. What was it? Uh, so I worked at Chase uh, for, okay. th for three summers, I think, uh, when I was in college. Uh, as I said, uh, in New York, it was kind of a f very common for people to work in, uh, in finance. So going to work at a bank was, mm -hmm. uh, was really good. 
it was I think the culture there was pretty different than it is here in the Silicon Valley. Here it's much more focused around engineering, focused around programming. There's like a big uh, culture of like, uh, you know, kind of like people want to be the software engineers. It's it's kind of like the cool thing to do here. Uh, that's, that was not the case in, in New York. Uh, the, the cool thing to do was to be like a stock broker or, or a trader, mm -hmm. things like that. And we were just the guys who made the tools for them okay. to make business decisions. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely less cool. Uh, it, you know, you had to like dress formally and you know to work. Like this is probably not formal enough. Oh, for, okay, for work. <laughs> not formal. Yeah, okay. uh, which I didn't, I didn't like. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got it. So um, and um, your university was it like a prestigious one or? Yeah, Columbia is pretty good. Uh, one thing I think I was lucky f about was that the program was actually pretty small, at least mm -hmm. at the time that I was there. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think my year had only like 40 computer science students. Um, so it was nice because the classes were reasonably sized, uh, and so I got a lot of attention from, from professors. Uh, okay. Can you tell about the uh, communication with uh, professors? Because in uh, Russia and my country, my home country, Belarus, uh, we not like speaking or communicate with uh, professors much. What about uh, the United States? Yeah, it, def it definitely depends on the university. Uh, so again, at Columbia, the school was very small, and so you know, if a professor was teaching a class of 40 students, uh, they usually had uh, uh, like um, office hours or like a seminar period where you can go and like ask questions. And usually, it would be like uh, half of it would be one of their students. Uh, and then half of it would be with the professor themselves. And you know, if you prefer to speak to the professor, you can go straight to them, and, and they'll explain stuff to you. Which I think, you know, is, is super useful because professors are obviously like extremely knowledgeable, and they really, I mean, they're teaching the class, so they kind of they usually care about uh, you know you learning the material, and uh, and so that's very beneficial. Here at Stanford, for example, the, the, many of the classes are much much bigger, um, like the AI class or the machine learning classes. Some few thousand people or something um, so for for that it, it is basically impossible to to go see the professor um, it's obviously different if you're a PhD student if you're a PhD student you're working on research project it's much easier to, to, yeah. to speak to professors yeah. uh, what was um, after graduation uh, how did you find your first job so actually I found my first job like eight months before graduation oh, okay. or something like that um, I, I remember I signed my offer for Microsoft around November or like around uh, Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, so yeah, the way it worked uh, at Columbia, I think it still works like this in, in many schools. Uh, big companies will come in and interview okay. on campus mm -hmm. and they usually do pretty early in the school year. They'll do it around uh, like September, October. Then like maybe November you do like another interview where you actually go and visit. So I, I went and visited Seattle, uh, Redmond. Uh, where I interviewed with them, and then I got I got the offer in November, and then I signed it. And so then for like half the year, I already knew kind of what my job was going to be in September when I started. So you even didn't have a CV for them? No, of, of course I had a CV, okay. but it was uh, I just did the process at the beginning of my senior year. Okay, can you describe the process of interviewing uh, Microsoft? Yeah, so it's. it's at least for when you're interviewing on campus, uh, it's usually pretty short and pretty quick. Uh, most places will do like two half hour interviews on campus. Um, and so, you know, it, it di different companies do it differently, but usually it's like both of them are technical. And so you just sit down and they're like, here's a problem. You know, I want you to uh, solve like, you know, so like sorting or binary trees or some kind of problem where you have to like write some code for it. And then they ask you to like write the code uh, on paper. Uh, maybe today it's all on computers. When I was in an undergrad, we still did it on paper. Um, and, uh, and then for the follow-on interview, it was full day. So basically from like 9 a.m. until like 5 p.m., the whole day was interviews. Most of them were technical. They let you relax a little bit during lunch, which is still an interview, but uh, it's more kind of interpersonal. Uh, they're just kind of getting to know you. Okay. Um, was it... Uh Microsoft, the only one company that you uh, have offer from? No, I was also, I, um, I interviewed with a lot of banks. 
Uh, so again, kind of uh, a lot of the, the the popular thing at the time, at least for the for my school, at least for me, maybe I didn't have like a good view of what was going on in the world, uh, was going into finance, uh, and that was kind of like where my experience was because of the internships and so I felt much more comfortable I interviewed at a bunch of different banks uh, and then I interviewed uh, I think Microsoft was the only like software company that, that uh, gave me an offer and then I, I went there and I was like oh wow like people go to work in shorts and flip-flops and <laughs> like you know like kind of everybody here is a software engineer it's not like we have to uh, kind of like work on our tools and then go like pass it off to like some somebody else who really uses it like uh, and just kind of the structure of kind of building software is much more of like the prominent uh, part of the business. Um, I really like that, so oh. that's why I, I That was the reason that you chose uh, them. Yeah. Okay, um, let's talk about uh, your work in um, Microsoft. I don't know, maybe it's, uh, for, American, it's uh, for Americans it's pretty easy to move to the now the, uh, to other cities and uh, how Seattle for you like for living yeah yeah that's a good point I mean uh, I think I, I think you're right in that Americans do tend to move cities relatively often this is the first time that I really moved to a new city because I, I went to college in the same place that I grew up yeah. Um, so yeah I mean a part of it was just kind of you know, I was young and I was like, okay, like this is a great opportunity to move to a new city, like learn kind of to take care of myself and to like, you know, go through all the stuff of like buying an apartment, getting furniture, getting whatever car, whatever, like kind of, you know, being an adult, being totally independent. Um, and uh, it, it was a great, it was a great experience uh, to be able to learn that stuff. Doing it when you're going to work for a big company is makes it much easier because, uh, you know, the first day I met a whole bunch of kids who are my age who also just moved from, like, some mm -hmm. other part of the country. And we all became friends. We had, like, a big group of friends and everybody, you know, could give uh, tips to each other, like, oh, you know, this is a good neighborhood to live in. This is not a good neighborhood to live in. You know, here's where you can get a, a bike. Here's where you can get a, a ride. Here's where it's, like, close to the buses, you know, whatever. Um, so that was really nice. Seattle's a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. uh, I really loved it there. Uh, it's got amazing skiing. A lot of people, they get really like worked up about the fact that it's raining there all the time and there's like a lot of clouds. Mm -hmm. And it's true, it's a little bit sad, but uh, that means that there's like like eight months of good skiing there uh, <laughs> and it's only two hours away, so it's really nice. Uh, I love it there. Like I said, I, I made a lot of friends through work uh, and so it, it was a really nice experience. Uh, okay, uh, what do you like and you, uh, dislike about uh, Microsoft? I mean, in context of your work. In general, with these big companies, it's very dependent on the team that you work on. Uh, and so, you know, there are some teams that are uh, feel more like a startup because they're small and they're kind of changing very quickly. There are some teams that are very kind of old and established and kind of do things a very specific way and will never change. Um, and the company's huge, so there's like all these different opportunities within the company. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, Microsoft is a great company. It has uh, kind of a great, uh, they have like great tools, great technology, great lifestyle, uh, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was really nice. I think for me personally, I, uh, I was working on a, on a product that was like data visualization, uh, which was not really my expertise. I was more focused on systems at the time. And then I had an opportunity to join a startup that was really, like the whole business was built on building uh, like systems software. Uh, and uh, the whole like idea of going to a startup and kind of being a bigger part in uh, like influencing the product where like at, at Microsoft I was part of a 70 person team that was still a tiny like product within like a huge product. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, you know, going to a startup was, was a good opportunity to, to kind of just get more control over things that were going on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Tell, uh, tell us about uh, the startup. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, um, we can compare it with a big company, with Microsoft. And uh, um, what did you like in working in a startup? Yeah, so, so working at a startup is, is pretty challenging because uh, I think you have to be much more independent. Uh, there isn't always somebody who knows like the right way to do something or the best way to do something. And 
oftentimes you're the first person to like have to deal with a certain problem, at least in the company. Obviously, you know, the internet has millions of answers to all sorts of different things, but, but still it's kind of like uh, whatever solution that you choose, everyone in the company is going to have to deal with this for the rest of their lives, right? Um, and this is not, uh, you know, it, like bigger companies usually it's kind of more structured. And so, uh, first of all, I, I, I felt lucky with my experience in Microsoft kind of taught me how to work in a big team where you really have to be thoughtful about like you have many engineers changing lots of code all the time and like how to how to manage this because it's very easy when you have a small team of like you know four or five people to be like oh it's fine we'll just like do whatever crazy stuff and then later you're like oh my god we made a huge mess and we were like well, we're never going to fix this um, and um, so so yeah working on the startup was cool like I said they did uh, uh, system stuff, so it was specifically distributed storage for data centers. Uh, so the idea is, uh, you know, usually in data centers you have uh, your servers, which are your compute, and then you have storage uh, separately. And so we wanted to build a virtual caching layer uh, so that you don't have to, uh, like, pull data from the storage all the time uh, and actually have it distributed, so not just, like, local to, to each compute. Um, it was a cool company, uh, had a lot of fun, spent, like, three years there. Uh, kind of grew as as an engineer and as like uh, a uh, like a, a software engineer a lot. Okay, but what did you leave it? Uh, to do a PhD. <laughs> oh really? I I saw uh, in your LinkedIn I saw that uh, you have a short period when you work in Israel, mm -hmm. right? Yep. In Intel. Yep. Can you tell about this period? Sure. Yeah. So so actually I was accepted to Stanford. Uh, first and then I was like okay I have you know like half a year uh, I can go and do something fun uh, and kind of like do my like exploring the world traveling kind of phase before before I come to Stanford and, and start um, so yeah I left I left the startup to do you know to go back to academia uh, but then I had this block where, where I was able to do uh, some other stuff so yeah going to Israel is great uh, it's a it's a beautiful country great tech scene a lot of startups there a lot of established companies uh, you know like Intel has a huge presence there that's where I ended up working I was very lucky I ended up joining a, a company where I you know I told them I was like look I'm gonna be going back to school I have six months uh, I can come and you know work on some projects and they were like great you know we have some projects for you come join uh, you know you can you can work uh, and they they also realized that I was like trying to have like a cultural experience as well so you know they weren't like oh you have to work every single weekend and late night every day like they understood I, I you know I came to um, to kind of en enjoy my time there as well so I took a little bit of a pay cut but but had like a lot of flexibility for that mm -hmm. um, so uh, it was, yeah it was just uh, a great experience uh, learned a lot I think one of the things that it really taught me was about um, kind of so I, I speak a little bit of Hebrew, uh, but when I moved over there, my Hebrew was very poor. <laughs> uh, and by the time I left, it was just kind of poor. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it gave me a lot of appreciation of like what it feels like to go to a different country and to not always understand everything and to sometimes have to go and ask things from people, but like not be able to communicate with them perfectly. Um, you know, it's something that, that my parents went through moving here. It's something that like, you know, a lot of my friends and colleagues have done kind of moving to a different country. And so kind of at least experiencing that for a little while, uh, I thought it, it, it gave me a greater appreciation for the challenges of, of doing that. I know that uh, some of my subscribers also live in uh, Israel. Uh, can you compare like uh, culture difference between uh, people in, in Israel and maybe work in process in Israel and uh, in the United States? Mm. I mean, I think... I think <laughs> if, you, if you know something, if you... Yeah. So there, there's this funny slideshow that went around Intel where it's like translations of things Israelis say for Americans. And basically they're, they're very to the point and they're very critical. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's because they, they don't... Like, Americans are very nice. They're like, you know, if you present them some idea, they're like, oh, this is really cool, but... but yeah. Yes, I know Yeah, this. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, Israelis will not even let you finish your sentence. They'll, you know, like, you're, you're still talking. They'll be like, no, no, but what about this? What, what about this? This doesn't work. Uh -huh. uh, and, and so, uh, you know, it, it, but it's really cool. It, it, makes, it makes people, I think, also more comfortable to, to kind of criticize each other, to question each other, to, to argue a little bit. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think that's, that's the biggest difference. 
uh, the style there in general is is more uh, is less formal, um, and uh, it, I think it's just it's very similar to Silicon Valley, where mm -hmm. there you know you don't necessarily have this like oh that's the boss like we all have to uh, kind of like you know like. I don't know, dress up fancy and like be very formal or something. Everybody's kind of friends, everybody's uh, kind of very open to talking to each other. Why did you decide uh, to, I, I don't know, to have a PhD? If you're a good engineer, you say, what's the best way to solve it? Uh, but I think as, as a PhD, uh, the question is much more of like, how many different ways can I solve this? Why did you choose NLP? I think it's something that's relatively easy to connect to, as opposed to other things. Can you describe um, the studying process in uh, Stanford? This was really popular, this was not very popular. You only have 10 weeks, basically everything here yeah. <laughs> is very expensive. But maybe you have some plans for, uh, I mean, career after PhD? Retirement. <laughs> <laughs> What's your greatest strength? Don't reveal your uh, your weaknesses or like turn it around and like don't answer the question 